Behind that, coming back, you've got your pitot heat and your windshield defrost switch, your navigation bright and dim switches, your nav steady and flash on your nav lights. Up above, way up there in the corner, you've got your dimmer switches for the rheostats, your hydraulic emergency pump for putting the gear down only, your generator covered switch, and uh, your normal and standby inverter system, your battery switch on off and override, it's in the off position now. Put that into the normal position for a normal start, down position to motor the uh, engine in case of a, a wet start. That's your actual starting switch, up for two seconds, it's all automatic. Circuit breaker system, you got a relay and an inverter power switch. I usually pull those so they don't draw energy and then pop them in once the engine started. And then coming back a little farther, you've got a, uh, a placard and then behind that the actual Canadair placards stating when it was built, serial number 231 from the Canadian uh, people in Winnipeg. A uh, little switch right there is your seat up and down switch. Electric sweet seat up and down switch. And the uh, barber pole below it is your emergency hydraulic system. You slide that forward to run the gear down in an emergency. Okay, back to the panel there. You do have a hydraulics gauge that should show 1,000. It'll fluctuate as you use the systems. Remember the uh, flaps are electric. The ailerons are hydraulically assisted with the uh, right, right there, that little right here. Hydraulically assist the aileron. Foot warmer there, also a foot warmer on that side for pressurizing the airplane. And a series of circuit breakers across from uh, start circuit breakers to landing light circuit breaker to nav lights just across the bottom there. And that's it. Cockpit. I did upholster the seats with uh, tuck and roll blue and put all new seat belts in. The other ones are in the nose. They were really ragged. It wasn't that big a deal to put new five-way seat belts in. The cushions, parachutes are uh, under the seat cushions there and everything. This is looking to the back, to the right side. And of course, there's not as much equipment in the back, but everything an instructor needs. Uh, up in the canopy here is the explosive charge for uh, ejecting the canopy and the lever for that is either the ejection heat handle or a T handle down by the seat. Either way, we pull that flag, flag and you activate the system, it will blow the canopy on this tube right off the airplane. So it's one of those things that we keep flagged until you're ready to fly. GPS antenna is back there because of good uh, receiving, good access. Extra handle for opening the canopy releases and goes down to the floor and panning away. Front seat, cushions, new upholstery, new seat belts, parachute underneath. And looking over to the left quadrant, landing gear handle. I'll try to get over to the landing gear handle. I'm on the left side of the seat, looking down, and that white handle there with the knob on it, push the end of the knob and pull that white handle up, that's your landing gear. Throttle, fuel indicating, the blue light is your main fuselage pump, it'll be on at all times. Uh, right there is your electric fuel shutoff in case of a fire. Uh, up on the stick, you've got your automatic relight in the thumb position and of course on the top, the Chinese hat becomes your forward and aft elevator, your left and right aileron, gauge showing that your battery and generators are working, below it your fuselage tank and fuel counter system and fuel venting light that was put in at great cost. RPM gauge, gauge, P meter, Daftron clock, altimeter, airspeed indicator, Mach indicator, placarding. Going to the external a little bit, looking out the right side at 230 gallon tip tank, a 52 gallon leading edge tank, and a 77 gallon wing tank. Each has their own separate fuel pump with a switch. Panning to the rear, 
up here is one of your pre, main pre-flight inspection areas, but it's also your plenum chamber, which opens and closes when you don't have air being forced into the NEAN 10 engine. It accesses the hydraulic, the engine oil, and up on the top here is two valves for your oxygen. Looking over the airplane 90-gallon fuselage tank here, this is the access panel to that for your float valves. This is a closed filler tank, but it does access the main fuel tank for float valves and uh, uh, the fuel that's being pumped in from the wing leading edge and tip tanks. And looking over the front. Top of the uh, fuselage behind the plenum chamber. The whole plenum chamber comes off for uh, breakdown inspection, for looking at the engine and for checking oil, that type of thing. This is called your saber drain. It's your vent to the main fuel tank. It has to be open. The little lights in the cockpit that were added are for overfilling the fuselage tank. If there's anything venting out of there, it's going to tell the pilot. It's a nice system to have. Have a lot of them have it. This one does it. Okay, John, I'm under the right wheel well, panning into the wheel well. That happens to be your low pressure fuel pot. It's your filter. It's changed whenever there's a problem with a bypass light whenever you think you have contaminated fuel or once a year with a filter out. Keep the struts fairly high because they're uh, light on fuel. I cuff them for long-term storage so the strut can't drop on a Bonanza wing or whatever. Tires are 14 ply and new. Brakes you check for wear and tear on the inside. These brakes are brand new. 14 ply brand new Goodyear tires. 75 if you're really heavy on a rough runway. 165 panning to the nose. 85 PSI, strut about four inches, and above it the shimmy dampeners with a half inch of piston showing on each shimmy dampener. Above that is a gland nut right towards the top of the the top of the uh, piston itself, and right there you'll see kind of a gnarled nut that controls the shimmy on that. That little wire coming down is static wick, and it's important to have that on. Over left gear well. Very clean gear wells, all painted, nice new lines, all standard, nice placarding. And up in the left wheel well, panning back to the wheel, strut, 14 ply tire, 165 PSI, new tires. Not too much here except pull the clothes pins, which uh, will over-center the gear if, if you're on the ground, and your up locks. A few bends underneath, you happen to have a uh, formation light right there pods here would be for a uh, cargo carrying capacity that the Canadians use. They don't use it now, of course. And you got a standard VOR antenna right here, another comm antenna here, and the nose gear doors with your air cycle machine up inside. Okay, I'm going to decal the airplane a little bit and start it. I'm going to, I took the inlet plugs out. I'm going to go up and start the airplane. And I've got my helmet here. I'm going to check the radios and that just because it's been a while since it, uh, has been activated. Start running the systems and uh, making sure that all the accumulators, tires, and everything are ready. Again, it's May 19th, so we're moving along. I got the facts today from Ian on the uh, registration, the insurance, and the uh, special airworthiness and everything that I'm going to be getting to Ian. It's the 19th today. I should have that done by the 22nd. Okay, over. Those flags are suction cupped on the edge there, John. The mirrors are for gear in the mirror in case you have an indicator problem, but the flags are so somebody doesn't park a Bonanza wing or some smaller fixed wing under that wing for long-term storage and then have one of those struts go down and do damage. So with the cuff and the flag, I've had good luck hangering these airplanes with no damage. Thank you.